Now, you spoke with Congress members on Capitol Hill about meddling in Venezuela. What do you think of their responses? Well, you'd see so much ignorance in, my, um, in the responses I got where I would simply ask, is the U.S. meddling in Venezuela? Uh, many of them, first of all, couldn't draw the connection to uh, the constant debate on Capitol Hill about Russian meddling in the U.S., where Russia is accused of, you know, hacking and, um, you know, putting some bots on Twitter, whereas the U.S. is actually trying to install a new government and threatening uh, to bomb the country unless they agree. And so you see the mentality of American exceptionalism on display, but you also see the ignorance because many of the members of Congress couldn't even comment on this vital situation. And some said that they were just waiting for a briefing. In other words, they were waiting for their marching orders. And it really shows how easy it is for the permanent war state in America to get its way on Capitol Hill, because you have 438 people who are generally like a bunch of sheep and won't stand in their way. Only five members of Congress so far have spoken up against U.S. intervention in Venezuela. Now, why do, don't more lawmakers reject their own government's intervention? Uh, you know, I think partly it's cowardice. Uh, one person I'd point to as someone who's been timid is Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who has kind of a, become a minor celebrity since, or a major celebrity since being elected. She's, um, you know, in her 30s. Um, she's very telegenic. Her Twitter account has... Um, I think over a million followers. Every time she tweets something, it gets tens of thousands of retweets. And she claims to be extremely progressive and a socialist. And yet she has not said a word about the prospect of the U.S. attacking Venezuela to uh, install a new government and steal its assets. And you would think that it wouldn't be hard for her to say something. But clearly, she has greater ambitions in politics. And she's afraid of standing in the way of the permanent war state. And that is a really sad statement on where politics are at in the U.S.